I am answering your question. I was referring to the judge. I don't think I, was I think that kind of got a little ahead of. Oh, Mr. Burks, just uh, I'll let you interrupt the answer, and you can ask a follow up. I I apologize. I was instructing the clerk to turn up the volume. Um, so go ahead, ask your question. Same question. Sure. What were you doing the evening of November 21st, 2021, before linking up with the alleged defendant? Pinging with my roommate at the time at Frame Park. And what were you and your roommate doing? I'll object. We covered this ground during her testimony previously. Objection. And grounds for I object to that and grounds for the objection on the behalf of the state. Ms. Burks, we did cover many of these topics previously, so if there's new topics, please go to those. I'll give you a little bit of leeway uh, to lay some foundation, but go ahead and ask your that's, question. That's the objection is from the state is overruled. <coughs> Do you remember the question? You asked me what we were doing at the at the park of Corby. Is that your question? Yes. We were drinking. I was drinking my car beverage. Do you recall uh, around what time of the evening it was when you and your uh, roommate arrived at the park? I do not remember. We left where we were staying a little around um, afternoon. <coughs> Do you recall uh, Do you recall having uh, any phone interactions during that time when you and your roommate were at the park? Phone interaction, yes. Do you recall who they were with? You. What do you mean by you? Daryl Brooks. Is that usually the name you refer to the alleged defendant by? No. Nope. Would it be fair to say that uh, during those uh, phone interactions, uh, there was a talk of you guys meeting up, would that be fair to say? Yes. Um, do you recall, to the best of your recollection, what time that would have been at? No, I don't remember. It was throughout the day. I'm sorry, you are you making references to the, the phone conversations being throughout the day? Yes. And so at some point, would it be fair to say that you did meet up with the alleged defendant? Yes. Do you recall what time that was? I just told you no. Do you recall if you were still at the park during that time or had you moved locations? Still at the park. And was your roommate still present with you at that time? No, she left. We went separate ways. I stayed at the park, and she went her other way with her friend. Do you recall who that friend was? Nick. I'm 
assuming, or let me back that up. Um, would it be fair to say that at some point during the meetup with the alleged defendant, things got a little chaotic? Would that be fair to say? Yes. Do you recall <coughs> if at that point you were still at the park? When we met up? Yes. Well, we were at the park for a second, then we drove around. Where did you drive to? Around, then me and, him, me and you, Mr. Brooks, were arguing in the car. We went up, it's, it's a street, it's like a hill, we went up there. And then me and you got into an altercation, I got out of the car, walked back towards Frame Park. Oh, down. wait, again. Hold on, she's answering okay. your question. Um, yes. her where you drove from. Go ahead. Then, yes, ma'am. And then I was walking down the street, and I left your car, and that's when you followed me, and I walked back towards Frame Park, and you followed me. Made reference to walk back to Frank Park. Uh, I don't know the exact street name. It was the walk back down the hill. I don't know the exact street name. Did you at any time, <clears throat> sorry, did you at any time during your uh, travels back to Frank Park, did you at any time notice that There was something going on in the, the area? No. When I got to Frame, I was too worried about walking back to Frame Park. When I got to Frame Park after I left it, that's when I realized there's something going on. And did you ever arrive back at Frame Park? Yes. And what did you do when you arrived back at Frame Park? I called my friend Corey and told her that me and Mr. Brooks got into an altercation. Mr. Brooks was following me. Um, I went back to the SUV, the car, and you argued with me somewhere. I walked back across the street, and by that time, Miss Corey had already walked towards us to meet up, meet up with me. You made reference to you uh, calling uh, your friends. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do you recall, well, let me back up a little bit. Did you call your friend Corey or the friend that she had left you to hang out with? Corey's phone, I kept calling her phone. Her phone kept going to voicemails, and I called Nick's phone. He put Corey on the phone. I said, Daryl Brooks had just hit me. back up a little bit, if I may, to the day prior, November 20th of 2021. Do you recall what you were doing that day? Well, I was where I was staying at the shelter at first. I was arguing still with Mr. Brooks all throughout the day. Um, me and Corey had left, and Corey and I stepped away, and I went back to Frame Park. On um, Frame Park, that's where I met you at. 
me and you also <coughs> got into argument that day. But we didn't drive around. We're at the frame park. So you're saying that you and the alleged defendant were together the day of November 20th, 2021? Yes. Do you recall around what time that was? I do not remember. stated you were briefly with your friend Corey that day? Yeah, but she went a whole different direction. She didn't come to Frame Park with me. She turned on a whole different street right before Frame Park. Call at any time on November 21st of 2021 being interviewed by a detective Guth? Yep. And do you recall giving a recorded a recorded uh, report at that time? I don't remember. Do you recall if you had given Detective Goof all the details of the alleged incident on November 20th of 2021? I didn't give him all the details, but I did the next day when I seen him. It was reported there was in fact no incident on November 20th, 2021. That's not true. Objection. Move to strike the answer and the question. Grounds. Lack of personal knowledge. Hearsay. Um, sustained. I'll strike the question and the answer. The reason stated. Sir, rephrase or. So can I show the witness the same paperwork that I attempted to show? No. And why not? Not relevant. How's it not relevant when that was just testified to? Wouldn't that be opening the door? No. Next question. Any reason why? It would be reported no incident happened on November 20th of 2021. No objection. Grounds. Since that's not in evidence, sustained. Grounds for the sustain. The record speaks for itself. So upon speaking to Detective Goof during the first interview, do you recall why you were not forthright with information? It wasn't that I was not forthright, I just didn't tell him everything right away. 
Why not? I don't know, Mr. Brooks. When speaking with a law enforcement officer, would it be fair to say that you should be truthful and honest? I was very truthful. I just didn't tell him everything at once. I told him the next day, Mr. Brooks. And in the alleged incident on November 20th of 2021, were you injured? No. <coughs> well, you did hit me a little, both like a little. Were you injured? No, I didn't have any marks on me. Is that what you're asking? So where were you injured? By my lip. Objection. This states the evidence. Grounds. Um, I believe the witness understood the question. She answered it. It may stand. Did your roommate observe any injuries from the alleged incident on, on November 20th, 2021? She knew about it, but there's, there's nothing visible on my face. Do you know if your roommate, do you know if your roommate had spoken with law enforcement about these alleged incidents? From November 20th of 2021 and November 21st of 2021? I don't know. <clears throat> Did she ever tell you yourself that she was interviewed by any law enforcement? I don't remember. So what time did you meet up with the alleged defendant on November 20th, 2021? I don't remember. Morning time. Afternoon. Time. I didn't hear that. Afternoon. What were you doing prior to the alleged meeting up with the alleged defendant? Objection. Grounds. Asked and answered. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain. Asked and answered. When? Next question, please. When was it answered? So to the best of your recollection, you you can't recall why an alleged incident on November 20th of 2021 was reported to never happen. Objection. Grounds. Same reasons as the previous objections. Since facts not in evidence, this characterizes her prior testimony and irrelevant. I object to that respectfully and that's for a legal finding of fact and a legal reconsideration of that ruling, Your Honor. Denied. Noted for the record. Next question, please. I'm trying to figure out how something got pulled out of thin air. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. 
So it would be fair to say that you have uh, a child in common with the alleged defendant. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Yeah, is that the only child in common? Yes. Do you have any other children? Objection. Grounds? It has nothing to do Grounds. with the case. Sorry. Hold on, there's been an objection. Not relevant. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain? The record speaks for itself. Next question. I, well, what was the record speaking for itself? I didn't, I didn't hear it. Not relevant. How is it not relevant? Next question, please. How is it not relevant? child that you have in, in, in common with the alleged defendant. <coughs> How old is that child? 15. Do you keep regular contact with that child? Off and on. Describe what you mean by off and on. I'll object. Grounds. This is not relevant. Not relevant. Sustained. Grounds. Not relevant, sir. She answered it. Next question, please. And the child in common that you have with the alleged defendant. That child live with you? No. Objection. Grounds. Grounds. Sustained. Not relevant. You don't have to answer that. Thank you. Do any of your children live with you? Objection. Grounds. Relevant. Sustained. That doesn't answer my question, but okay. <clears throat> to meeting in Nevada, do you recall where you met at in Nevada? No, I remember. Question would be. I don't know if you can see them from here, but do you recognize these pictures? Um, you need to show those to the state. The bailiff will take them. It's not the presence of the jury uh, at the conclusion of this witness, and if need be, bring the witness. Photos just don't pop up out of the blue. Mr. Brooks uh, assumes facts, not in evidence. No, and no. any, and I'll rise for the jury. He was told that the witness was supposed to be so deeply afraid of me and all this type of stuff. So if you're so deeply afraid and worried about somebody and this and that, why would you sneak and have contact? Do you want to open up the door to the other act's evidence of That's you not opening. No, 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 no. That's not Hear opening the door. Hear me out. Oh, yes, it does. No, it doesn't. These witnesses have been incredibly careful to abide by my court of law when there are pretrial rulings. The testimony of a witness needs to be said in such a way not to run afoul of that. This witness, Detective Guth, I believe Detective Casey and others, Corey Runkle, and even uh, Nicholas Kirby yesterday, this court has all had to stop them so that they didn't run afoul or they stopped themselves so that they didn't run afoul of the court's pretrial ruling on other acts evidence between you and this witness. And I have been very, very careful to make sure that doesn't come in. But if you keep questioning her about whether she's afraid or not, or I why she wouldn't have contact or not, you are opening the door to that testimony. How? All of how, my rulings does, have been does, made to prevent what could be seen as prejudicial in, uh, evidence. The standard's not prejudicial. The standard's whether it's unfairly prejudicial.
It's but unfairly you can open the door Your to Honor, that, sir. It's unfairly president, uh, uh, prejudicial that I have a, a, a document stating that November 20th never even happened, but yet and still the witness you, can get on the stand and lie on the stand. over to the state? Come on, man. Y'all know that's not right. Um, Y'all know that's not right. Then you need to immediately turn it over to the state right now. It may become relevant, but no one has seen it. When so, did you receive the so document? That, so what, so hold on. When did you? What, gonna, I'm having you make an offer. But when did you receive the okay, document? Okay, but that I just want to stay for the record, Your Honor, that that's that's kind of biased because the the state did the same thing yesterday with creating a ex exhibit right on the fly that didn't even exist that I didn't have. But that's then, not true. That's a misstatement no, that, of the that, of that the is evidence. true. No, she said it herself. No. Marking an exhibit is not creating an no, exhibit. No, not marking an exhibit. She said We're not going to go down a tangent, sir. Right, I'm going to focus gonna on this, you, and I'm going to give you the fair. opportunity to fair. make a record. It's not right? fair. It's not fair. When not. did you receive <clears throat> this document that you claim was sent by this witness? It, it's not claimed. It's for a fact. Sir, it hasn't been established yet. I need to make a record. So y'all want, want, want the letter? I want to see the letter. I want to see the letter. Okay, so I got to. And I want to so know I when you received it. I got to bring that in. Every time, this this is what I don't get. Every time I'm presenting something that needs to be made for the record and placed in the evidence, it's a problem. But the state can do it, no it's, problem. It's not, sir, there are proper procedures, and okay. I want well, you to that make was the a proper record. Procedure. If, I don't, if you don't make a record, so then what? I can't it, make a ruling. It threw people off the loop. They weren't ready for it. They scared of it. That's what it is? Come on, man. Mr. Brooks, Come on, man. Stop. When you, you stop are, it. you are, stop even it. You're a public servant, Your Honor. I, I respect your courtroom. I you respect do. you. You're a public servant, though. Your job is to be the referee. Is it or is it not? You stated so yourself on record that your job is being the umpire. Your Honor, can I ask Ms. Patterson to be excused? Yes, for you can be excused. My Thank apologies. You. My apologies, too, but it needs to be some truth. Especially when we're talking about stuff that didn't even happen, but they're allowed to get on the stand and say that it happened when they know it didn't happen. So let me make, I'm going to make a record about what this he's referring to man. in count 77. Okay. The Where, state, and what happened to that paper? Because it was on the table. Then when Mr. I come Brooks, back in, I need no to make a record paper. of a variety of so things. So who took my paper? And, and you keep interrupting me repeatedly today. Right. I have shown an abundance of patience this morning. I've warned you repeatedly about being removed from the courtroom. And then every time I try to get into it, you, uh, meaning an explanation and make a record, you interrupt, you attempt to divert everyone from what is being done this very second. I didn't attempt to do anything. Yes, you do it repeatedly, okay, sir. Whatever. So you're doing it once again. Whatever. Just make your record. The document that Mr. Brooks wanted to show Detective Guth and this witness was a letter sent from the state of Wisconsin to the court regarding count 77. The state sought to dismiss that count and they have prosecutorial discretion and I granted the request that the charge be dismissed. Why was the charge dismissed? And that's, I, I can't answer, I, it was dismissed because the request was made, sir. They don't need a reason. There's a, an abundance of case law about prosecutorial discretion. And they chose not to pursue that. My Your Honor, guess Your Honor, is maybe to simplify respect. things and to keep this tidy. I don't know. You know what? I'll indulge you. Attorney Opper, would you like to provide a basis for why the state sought dismissal of that charge prior to the start of this trial? Yes, Your Honor, because as Ms. Patterson just testified a short while ago, she did not have any visible marks or injuries from that event. And we did have the photographs of her injuries. We did not want to confuse the record as to whether or not there was a battery that occurred on November 20th. Your Honor, I object to that. What does, what does the letter read? You have the letter. You showed it to I, me, I sir. Try, yeah, and I'm, I've been trying to find it ever since I came back in here. Now, all of a sudden, I can't. And now you're imputing, though, like somehow you're imputing the integrity of this court, no, of the bailiffs of this state. You're accusing, frankly, everyone did of I moving point your finger, papers. Did I point the finger at anyone? Did I say anyone did anything? Not directly, but indirectly you did, So sir. how can you make you the assumption made, that I'm saying? Can I please make the record without yes, you interrupting Yes, you may. Yes, you may. 
I apologize. I appreciate that. Thank you. But you made repeated comments, <coughs> sir, about the, I can't find my documents, I don't know what happened, things of that nature. When you came back out, uh, you took multiple minutes before you even asked your first question of Ms. Patterson. Um, and if I need to, I will have a bailiff put on the record that no one touched your table. Your Honor, did I say anyone touched my table? I didn't, I you didn't say implied you. implied it, sir. But did I say that? You I, mean, I never you stated said, it implicitly. I never asked the bailiffs, hey, did any one of you touch my table? I never said that to them. I just said, I can't find my paper, which is the truth. I'm, and the I'm way that down. you said it, like, hmm. I didn't point anyone without, out, with, though. And, like, well, that's the kind the of interesting. Spirit, I don't, I don't have a document that was just on my table. That is what you said. That's what I that said, effect. but I did not point the finger at anyone. So, I you can have see the if letter. I came in, Your Honor, with You've all been respect. Given I can see if I came in and said, hey, one of you moved something off my table, or if I would have directed that towards the state, or if I directed that towards the clerks or something like that, then it would be, that would be more of a validity to what you're saying. I need to continue with the record, sir. It's very apparent to me, sir, that every time, I can't say every time, because that would be an absolute, but many times throughout this trial, and especially the last two days, when the court makes a ruling that you disagree with or I want to make a record about some behavior of yours or a, a further record about a ruling that you uh, that was not in your favor, that you start peppering me with questions or comments, statements. You question me about the law. You ask, is it verified law? It is, from my perspective, a clear attempt to, to kind of turn us in a direction away from what we're doing, perhaps even to stall and to delay. I'm sorry That's my that way. That I'm making a rule, you're doing it again. I mean, because it has no validity. <clears throat> so, I am trying to make a record outside the presence of the jury about a line of questioning you want to ask Ms. Patterson. Now, I've reviewed repeatedly up on the bench 90608 and 90616, which are two of the primary ways you can attack credibility. I've referenced one of those previously. 90608 is evidence of character and conduct of a witness. I'm not going to read through it all, but it's limited to character for truthfulness or untruthfulness. It's not specific instances of conduct. It's character evidence, which frankly wouldn't even come from the witness who's testifying. All right, then there's the statute on bias, 906.16. All right, and none of the questions as I heard them went to a permissible topic under bias of witnesses. You generally said credibility. You did not give me any further explanation as to why you believed it was relevant to credibility. Now we have you uh, claiming that there's some document that was sent by the witness after the charges were filed uh, that apparently contained photographs. I think, I, and you can clarify the record momentarily when I'm done, uh, that you believe goes to the credibility of this witness. So I need to ask a few questions about that, sir, to determine whether it has relevance to those issues. Number one, when did you receive this letter? I received this multiple letters, actually, over a period of time. It, it wasn't, I referred to this one because this one had the pictures, but. And why do you believe one, it was from to Ms. Answer your question, To answer your question with clarity. Thank you. Does it have a date on it, the letter? No, I didn't bring the letter, I brought the pictures because I thought from my interpretation, I thought showing the pictures would be okay, how did, it, how did I get these? So my mind was saying, show the pictures. They didn't, they didn't come out of thin air. The witness knows the that they sent me the pictures. They know that. Well, 
again, it assumes facts that aren't here. You're assuming this witness sent, sent it. I don't know. But even if she did, what relevance does it have to her credibility before this jury? It goes to the credibility because she's put on this facade of being so <coughs> afraid of someone but yet still, you know that we're not supposed to have contact, but you still sneaking behind and saying, oh, I wonder how you're doing. And, oh, this and this and that. Oh, I don't think no, she's ever said you. she was oh, afraid. Mm -hmm. I think that was the officers who may have uh, stated that. But I don't believe she but, ever said that. She specifically said today when you asked her why did you, it was either why did you go back or why did you have a look at my notes. And she it was said, why, I don't know. It was why weren't you forthright with all the details. That was the question. So again, I'm gonna ask you, even if this letter's from her, these pictures are from her, how does it relate to her credibility before the jury? Who else could be, who else could these pictures be from? I'm gonna ask you point blank, did you get a letter that's signed from her? I got, what do you mean signed? No how do you know, letters. what's your belief, why do you have a belief that they are from her? I have multiple letters from her. You're not answering my question. Why do you believe the letters are from Erica Patterson? Because they were sent from Erica Patterson. Why else would I? Were they signed by her? What do you mean signed? Did she write her name on the letter? Was are it the you, content of the kidding? letter? <clears throat> no, I'm not kidding you. I need to make a record, sir. You're making a statement that these letters are from her and that they're relevant to her credibility. Your Honor, I'm going to go out on the on the limb and, here. And I'm asking you why you have hold that opinion. I'm, I'm going to go out on the limb here and assume, which I know is true, you've never been in my position. You've never been in jail. So you've never received a letter from someone writing someone in jail. No one is going to suck. When you You're say not to answering me, my when question, you say to sir. Me, What's did, the basis why you believe they're from Miss Patterson? Is there some information in them that you that only she would know did she sign the letters is it a, is it penmanship that you recognize why do you believe they're from her as opposed to somebody else sending you information could be your mom why, could be i'm just saying could be anybody somebody, else this is, you got to answer my question it's called an honor, offer of this, proof but you still got to understand why this this is this is mind-boggling to me like how I got a child with this woman. How would I, why would I not know her handwriting? But you have to why have would a I foundation for these letters, sir. That might be this through your ridiculous. own testimony. So that I'm trying to figure out why you believe they're from her. Not all this other stuff about Are you I'm in serious? jail and I have a child. I'm trying to, act, I, I need to know. It's called an offer of proof. Are you serious? What do you believe? Why do you believe they're from her? I am serious. I need because they're that. from her. But you're assuming Like, how, that, how else am I supposed to answer that? I've given you a few reasons why it would lend to that opinion. So it has to be, it has to be put in a legal the term or something? The bottom line is I need the letter. So if you're going to question her on that, the state absolutely has a right to see the letter. So you, you need to provide that letter. I'm not, the bottom line is I'm not going to allow any questioning without having that letter. So the state has the ability to question you about that or question this witness and to look at the veracity of what your claims are here. So when we, I may take an early lunch, and if that's in your cell, then you can go get it and bring it. But without that letter, I'm not allowing this line of questioning. Do you have the letter with so, you in court? I just said no. How okay. many times I got to say the same thing on, on, on record? You know, sometimes, sir, I don't hear what you say because you interrupt me so much or you answer quietly. And, and I'm taking notes and I'm focused on probably a dozen things at the same time. But if I, but if I say something under my breath, everybody seems to hear it. Everybody seems to hear In that just fine. In a quiet courtroom, yes, we assumes, can hear it very and clearly. Everybody assumes that it has to be disparaging once again, you're doing this tactic. Because you tried it to it's not a tactic, it's facts. We're it's facts. About to some other reason. It's facts. Because I, I find thing. it hard to believe that um, I'm gonna all let of the a state, sudden nobody hears what I say. I'm going to let the Come state on, make stop. a record of why they stop. believe it's objectionable because I haven't let them do that. I've given you multiple opportunities to tell me why you so believe I, it's... I didn't get these pictures from they, nobody else. 
Why was somebody else? The record will else... reflect you have two pictures that you believe were from this witness. That I know is from. No, that you believe. That I know. All right, I'll ask the state their position on all of this. My position, Your Honor, is that these pictures, first of all, should not be admissible. One, because of a discovery violation. We've never seen them before. Two, because we have reason to believe that he did not get them from Erica Patterson. He is on a jail phone call talking to his mother, Dawn Woods, uh, about Dawn Woods sending these photographs to him. Now, that's a lie. I object Let to that. the state make their argument without interruption, sir. That's a lie, though. Three, I believe that these photographs are designed to make a suggestion to the jury that Erica Patterson is a bad mom. I think that that's what the defendant is trying to do. And if we're going to go down that road, then we would be forced to counter that claim. First of all, it doesn't make her an incredible witness, if it's even true. And second of all, if we go down that road, we would be forced to counter that claim by pointing out that not only does the defendant not live with the child in question, he doesn't live with any of the other children that he has. He impregnated Erica Patterson when she was a minor in Nevada, and for doing so, he was convicted of statutory sexual seduction, pled guilty in March of 2007 to that felony offense, and is a sex offender on the registry as a result. So if there's any causation that would lead to Erica Patterson being a bad mom, Mr. Brooks has a direct role in that causation. And that's Furthermore, I'll jump to that I'm not because that's a lie. Let him at finish. The end of the day, Let if him we, finish. If we don't open the Mr. door on Brooks. that. No, since he want to make a record and not be accurate, so let's be ac accurate all on the record since you think you know so much. Once so again, we can Mr. Open Brooks is on, being we can loud, open the door on how old she told me she was when we met. We can ask He's, that question too then. Over the top animated right now. Do you know that? Mr. Brooks, I'm ordering you to sit down and to let the state no, finish. No, that's not. I'm not going to sit here and let somebody be inaccurate on the record and lie on the record. Right. Under Illinois versus Allen, I've warned him repeatedly. He's being removed from the courtroom. Um, and you know what? Let me dial that back. We're just going to take an early lunch. One hour. We'll be back. And uh, unless he brings that letter Dog and he can show it is inadmissible, you know she will on. not be questioned. <laughs> and under 90611, I will declare the cross-examination closed. Know where, what Thank you. We're in recess. One hour. Happened, get your facts straight. So let's, let's open the door on all of it then so we can get all of it on the record. Since you think you know so much. Did, did you know she said she was 18 when I met her? Did you know that?
your time is, man. And we love you. Twelve ten. I do have Mr. Brooks in the other courtroom so that I could make an adequate record uh, without interruption. Um, we are on day 15 of trial and today has been a rough morning to say the least. We are in the stage of this trial where Mr. Brooks has the right to present relevant and probative evidence and to call witnesses and I have done my very best to honor his rights in that regard. Um, part of this morning dealt with his, from my perspective, um, disagreement with how I 
yesterday and in the days preceding that um, set up what I thought was a very reasonable way for witnesses to be called into this courtroom on his behalf. Um, going back to when the state offered to, <coughs> excuse me, serve subpoenas on his behalf and talk with uh, or coordinate with these witnesses to come into court. And yesterday, um, I wanted to narrow things down a bit, as is my not only right, but frankly my obligation under 906.11 to make sure that there is an effective uh, presentation of evidence of and exercise reasonable control over the mode and order of interrogating witnesses and presenting evidence so as to do all of the following. And let me just back up a moment because I, I think it's worth putting into the record once again the full language of 906.11, which is entitled Mode and Order of Interrogation and Presentation. Number one, control by judge. The judge shall exercise reasonable control over the mode and order of interrogating witnesses and presenting evidence so as to do all of the following. Make the interrogation and presentation effective for the ascertainment of truth. Avoid needless consumption of time. Protect witnesses from harassment or undue embarrassment. The next section, a witness may be cross-examined on any manner relevant to any issue in the case, including credibility. In the interest of justice, the judge may limit cross-examination with respect to matters not testified to on direct examination. The next section, leading questions. Leading questions should not be used on the direct examination of a witness except as may be necessary to develop as a statute that guides what I do, not just in this case, but in every case that comes before me for trial or even a motion hearing. And in my almost 11 years on the bench, I've presided over dozens and dozens of cases that have gone to trial. To say that this has been the most challenging of my career would be an understatement. I have done my best, I believe, to be fair, to be unbiased, to protect the rights of not only Mr. Brooks as it relates to this trial, but those of witnesses, um, those of the victims, and of course, last but not least, the jurors. Prior to the court taking an early lunch this morning, um, a couple of things happened that I think worth are worth making a further record about going to the beginning of this morning where it is true I did not do my usual practice of asking if there were any preliminary issues that the parties wanted to address. Um, in my mind, I wanted to get to the witnesses. Um, we are at that stage. I knew there were a number of witnesses to be called, and I wanted to ensure that it was done effectively um, for all of the reasons that are stated in 906.11. And I thought it was reasonable at the time to simply take up issues dealing with legal matters at a break. That's why I brought the jury in. During the jury coming in, um, Mr. Brooks continued to talk make statements, the record speaks for itself. I'm not gonna, frankly, I couldn't tell you everything that was said at that time. At this point, I think it's important to note, though, it's the tone, the demeanor, the decorum, or frankly, the lack thereof. For many days on end throughout this trial, it has become apparent that when the jury comes into this courtroom and leaves this courtroom that Mr. Brooks makes disparaging remarks about the integrity of this court, of these proceedings, and of other parties in the courtroom. He repeatedly references things such as subject matter jurisdiction, which there is a written decision that I have filed in this case. It is very clear this court has subject matter jurisdiction over this case. This is not a civil case. 
This is not a case in federal court, for example, where subject matter jurisdiction sometimes becomes an issue for things like whether there's a federal question that's involved. Um, every now and again in a criminal case, subject matter jurisdiction is a type of issue that comes up but not under the circumstances here. I'm not going to rehash everything that's in my decision. I stand by that decision. The record has been made abundantly clear that Mr. Brooks does not believe this court has jurisdiction. His, re his objections have been noted, well documented by the record that's being taken down. I know from my experience, not only as a judge, but as a litigator, that once that objection is made, it's preserved. I even stated at one point, I think there's a standing objection. I will note that for the record. Um, Mr. Brooks continues, in my opinion, to bring this issue up in front of the jury to distract, to delay, and to call into question the integrity of these proceedings. Frankly, maybe to create an issue on appeal if he is convicted. I brought him, I should state it this way, he is not in this courtroom presently because on day 15 of this trial, and specifically this morning, right, we have a history of disruptions, delay, interruptions, disrespectful behavior, the common courtesy, I think that just as a human being we all would expect have not been followed. I have, it's evidently made, it, let me restate that, it's, it is evident to this court that when there is a ruling that Mr. Brooks disagrees with, uh, whether it be an evidentiary ruling, um, whether it be on subject matter jurisdiction, whatever it may be, that he has a pattern now of directly confronting the court, asking for, is that verified law? Can you prove that? Is that an actual law? He starts debating the topic once again, or he will even try to further turn us away from that by bringing up another topic. For example, just today, when the issue came up about this letter that he claims was sent to him by Erica Patterson, and I asked repeatedly for an offer of proof rather than answer the question directly, Mr. Brooks instead started talking about an exhibit the state offered into evidence yesterday. And, and from my perspective, it's he doesn't address the merits of the issues that are before this court and then tries to divert things down a different path, whether that's to delay, to disrupt, or just simply be discourteous. I think all of those words would be an accurate description of what is happening. There, that was one piece of or one objection or series of objections uh, that I actually went off the record, uh, not off the record, I actually dismissed the jury in order to try to get an offer of proof uh, from Mr. Brooks. And as that exchange went on, it got, from my perspective, he got louder, he got more disrespectful, I think it's fair to say his behavior was volatile and it's because of that that I called an early lunch. And it's because of all of those things. Even when I attempt to give the warning that he will be removed upon further behavior, he immediately interrupts and says, are you holding me in contempt? A very clear indication to this court that he is attempting and trying and actually disrupting the proceedings so that I can't make an accurate record. Like I said, it's challenging. That is why he is in the other courtroom muted so that I can make the record. And I will confirm with my clerk and the bailiffs, I should have done this at the beginning, but I, I believe, right thank you, my clerk did confirm that they can see, they can hear, we can see um, as well. 
It is this court's opinion that Mr. Brooks is blatantly pushing the limits of what I have tried to establish in terms of when to call witnesses, how to call witnesses. He pushes the limits on asking questions that are not probative, that are not relevant, or that directly contravene a prior ruling by this court related to other acts evidence. <coughs> that ruling that I made was to the benefit of Daryl Brooks, not the state, Daryl Brooks, the defendant. There have been multiple witnesses who have themselves stopped basically looked at me and can I answer that question basically is there nonverbal communication to me or some have actually said I don't think I can answer that there have been other witnesses where I've stopped them from answering so as not to bring in the other acts evidence the most recent of which occurred this morning with Erica Patterson and the repeated questions to her related to either information she did or didn't give the detective when the detective spoke to her on two separate occasions. There's been other questions throughout the trial to, I believe to Detective Guth directly and other witnesses who had information uh, about why that may have been the case. But this witness um, I think has been very, very careful to not run afoul of the court's prior ruling. That leads to the evidence claimed by Mr. Brooks that he has related to a letter and photographs. As I indicated before the break, I've looked at both 906.16 and 906.08. Um, um, those are generally two of the statutes uh, dealing with character evidence, that would be 90608, 90616 deals with bias. From my perspective, the questions that were actually asked and answered about, uh, do we have a child together? Well, he didn't ask it quite that way, I'm summarizing, but regarding their common child, uh, regarding uh, whether he sees the child on or off, where they met, things of that nature, are solely to attack her, cred her character, sorry, as a mother, which is wholly improper. The only character evidence that would remotely be allowed under, at least for a witness under these circumstances, would be character for truthfulness, which would not even be from this witness. It's typically another witness comes in and testifies to that, and only about opinion evidence, their opinion of the person's character for truthfulness. Under bias, 906.16, uh, I didn't see where it also related to um, her credibility. It says, for the purpose of attacking the credibility of a witness, evidence of bias, prejudice, or interest of the witness for or against any party to the case is admissible. Again, simply attacking her on her motherhood. That's my perspective. I did not receive the answer to the repeated questions I asked regarding the offer of proof um, and this letter that he claims was sent by Erica Patterson and then the photos. The issue as it relates to this witness is a single charge in the case. It is a battery charge with a date of violation that is alleged to be November 21 of 2021. To allow Mr. Brooks to ask the witness about contact after that point in time is not relevant. He has not given me any reason as to why it's relevant. The state also, I think, rightly points out that if those questions were to be answered by Erica Patterson and other questions along those lines that were questions that were objected to by the state and that I sustained, Mr. Brooks would open the door to what only could be described as very damaging evidence against him related to the other acts evidence, related to whether he 
has a relationship with the children or not. And frankly, a topic I am not going to open the door to. I'm not going to allow. It's a side issue. It is not relevant. It is not probative. But certainly one could argue based upon the questions, topics that the door could be opened to. It is my duty as the judge assigned to this case to ensure that the trial is fair, that relevant and probative evidence comes in, and that it is done so in a way that's effective and efficient for the presentation of evidence including the testimony of witnesses. And so I'm not going to allow questions related to the children in common or child in common, at least any further between Mr. Brooks and Ms. Patterson, when they met, how they met, the nature of their relationship now, whether there's been any contact between them since he was arrested and going forward. Because nothing that I've been presented with would suggest it relates not only to relevant and probative information, but even to her credibility as a witness. I will give Mr. Brooks a final opportunity to make an offer of proof as to why he believes my decision is wrong. <coughs> that needs to include uh, why he, an offer of proof as to why he believes this letter is from Erica Patterson and why it's relevant to the issues in this case. Because he came in to the courtroom this afternoon and is not in here but in an adjacent courtroom, I want to make some additional findings as well and kind of just tie up a few loose ends for the record. As the court, the Supreme Court in Illinois versus Allen stated, it is essential to the proper administration of criminal justice that dignity, order, and decorum be the hallmarks of all court proceedings in our country. The flagrant disregard in the courtroom of elementary standards of proper conduct should not and cannot be tolerated. Trial judges confronted with disruptive, contemptuous, stubbornly defiant defendants must be given sufficient discretion to meet the circumstances of each case. No one formula for maintaining the appropriate courtroom atmosphere will be best in all situations. This court has utilized an adjacent courtroom with superior audio and video capabilities that I believe are the functional equivalent of being present in this courtroom. Mr. Brooks's behavior today alone was disruptive. I would absolutely characterize it as stubbornly defiant It was interruptive, and it certainly aggravates the proper administration of the criminal justice system of this trial. There was nothing dignified about it. There was nothing orderly about it. 